everyone who voted. I want you to know that I hear you. To the two-thirds of voters who chose not to participate in the process yesterday, I hear you too. All right, you know, I got to tell you, we were right on top of that, and, and Charles Hurt was right. He brought that up a week ago, right after uh, Barack Obama said that uh, inane, insane, uh, scary uh, remark at his press conference post the midterm election. And Charles Hurt, columnist for the Washington Times, joins us. And Charles, you incorporated it into your open letter uh, to Barack Obama. Um, and, you know, not too many other people have, have, have made note of that. Uh, that remark that we just heard. I can't understand that, Steve, because uh, to me it is, and I have, feel like I've heard a lot of very, very scary things out of this guy's mouth, <laughs> but that to me is far and away, I think, the scariest thing I've ever heard. Because what it means is, you know, he, so, so he heard the people that voted, but he also heard these, this much gr larger group of people who didn't vote, and somehow that supersedes the outcome of an election. So what he's saying is elections don't matter. What matters is what, what, what voices he hears. And, and we don't know who these voices are. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what it means, but, but, but clearly it means he doesn't believe in the supremacy of the actual, the outcome of an actual election, unless, of course, he wins. Because, of course, going into the election, he was talking about this election was a, a, a referendum on him and his policy. Right. And then, and then at the back end, he he, uh, he he says this, basically dismissing the entire election. And not to mention the the degree to which he insults and mocks and ridicules all of those good Americans who went out and voted in this election. <laughs> he, Absolutely, he's, he's laughing at them. You know what it would be like? It would be like Romney saying and the Republicans saying. Uh, well, you know, you're not getting your Supreme Court picks, or you're not getting your nominees because you really didn't win because a lot of our base stayed home. So we have to take exactly. them into we have to take them into consideration. <laughs> exactly, but of course that wouldn't work because it. Only, I think the only uh, the, the you know the only way that these voices matter is if they're voices that that President Obama hears, <laughs> and so so it wouldn't it wouldn't help us in any way. But you know, you know. If, if, what are they telling him? What, what is it? You know, ultimately, the, the, at the end of the day, what he's saying is, "Look, guys, you people are stupid." You know, just like his 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 uh, Obamacare architect. Yep. You people are stupid. Yep. You don't know what you're talking about. Shut up. Sit down. I'm going to do for you what you need to have done for you. What, what, what you're too dumb to know. Well, Charles, you, you, you know, and it's interesting. We had Ben Carson on earlier, and one of the things he said was. The reason this guy uh, from MIT uh, feels emboldened to say what he said uh, and the reason you know, Lois Lerner gets, feels emboldened to do what she does and, uh, is because there's never any consequences for anything that happens. None. No, there really isn't. It's, it's, almost like, it's almost like everything is like, it's, a, it's like the, the politics has gone like on the Internet where you can say anything, do anything, and, and nobody, it's just sort of this, Wild, wild west. No, nobody is being held accountable. I, I, and at this point, it's so bad. Even if the, the, the quote unquote mainstream media, whatever that is, even if they actually got off their, their tuchuses and, and went after the administration over some of this stuff, even then, I, I, it's so bad. I don't know that it would make a difference. Because, the, the, you know, I mean, you have a president who said, yeah, 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 there was an election, but, you know, I heard other people. Well, I mean, you, you, and your letter, I know, it's, in, it's just insane. And, and as you put in your letter to the president uh, at the Washington Times, uh, WashingtonTimes.com, uh, th these two years ahead are, are, are frightening, frightening to not only you and me, but, but many, many, many American people. Yeah, and, and to, like, true liberals and to, to uh, you know, uh, people who believe, you know, believe in the rights of minorities. That's what we're talking about here is, I mean, that's what the founders spent all their time talking about was how to protect the rights of minorities and, and the minority in, in, in politics. And we are, what we're witnessing is a, an absolute annihilation of all those protections here because Congress doesn't matter. Congress has no role, has no future in, in what you know, this president's vision. And, and, you know, what happens when... You know, it swings back around, and uh, and you know the, the the 
you know, people find themselves in, in, a, in a minority in the future, it's going to be horrible, absolutely horrible. And, 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 you know, for the past several, you know, six years, Harry Reid has been sort of the stalwart, uh, you know, going in this direction. And uh, now with him gone, it's going to be Obama on his own. But, you know, there's no indication that, that he's uh, no. not going to do anything but the, the worst we could imagine. Absolutely. I urge everyone to go to uh, WashingtonTimes.com, check out Charles Hurt and his uh, open letter to Barack Obama. Charles, great to speak to you, sir. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. All right, folks, we're coming back with economist and professor, Newsmax contributor, Peter Morisi.